still directing your life. Do you think? I mean, he had a plan. Say, you have a plan, but your plan is not always what Matthew God Matthew 5 and 6. But yet God is still in control. He has put you somewhere and you think, I wonder why I'm here. You know, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. God said, well, uh, you can move. How many people, there's a scripture, and I always remember, it said, Abner died like a fool died. How does a fool die? He misses God's will. He does it anyway. He was chasing a man, and it untold him to the effect, leave that man alone. And that man killed him. He died like a fool. Leave that alone. Don't be messing. Uh, a lot of times we want to straighten people out. <laughs> you want to get in trouble trying to straighten people out. <laughs> you better work on your own territory before you step into somebody else's, right? That's right. Amen. Praise God. In Matthew 5, it makes a statement here in verse 44. It says, But I say unto you, and this is Jesus talking now, love your enemies. Your enemies yeah. of all the things to say. Enemies. How many of you love your enemies? We ain't doing too good, are we? It's hard to do. <laughs> you that hard. Love your enemies. And then he said, bless them that curse you. Curse you. Okay, I had a guy the other day in Walmart over in Shreveport, and I was walking through, and I said, hey, son, are you serving the Lord? Black guy, and he said, oh, I don't fool with that stuff. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you you better <laughs> you better be thinking about it. You know, uh, you talk to people about Jesus, and a lot of times that they're offended automatically. What are they offended about? They they don't like religion. They don't like this, and uh, they just don't know the Lord. Bless them that curse you and do good to them. That kind of okay. Uh, that that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Man, love, that's, a, that's a load right there, isn't it? What, this, we talk about the will of God. What's God's will for your life? What does God want you to do? When you get up in the morning, here's what we do. You know, I, I wouldn't mind doing this today and this today, and I, I wouldn't mind this, and I want to go here, and I want to do this, and but we don't say, Lord, what's your will for today? What you want me to do? Thy will be done on earth. This is in verse six, uh, chapter 6, or as it is in heaven. Man, yeah, you want God's will to be done? Let me ask you, you think God's will is being done today? It's hard to answer, isn't it? You say, well, I don't know, we got a mess. No. We, we have got a mess, but is God's will being done? The ultimate will of God is being done. Right. Now, just because people sin, they got an answer for that. And God's will is they repent. As he said in uh, in uh, chapter 6 and verse 10, Thy kingdom come, this is how we ought to pray, uh, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then he says, give us this day our daily bread. Why, why daily? Because he wants us to get up every morning and depend on him. You may go home today. Right. Real home. I'm talking about real. Right. Right. And, and God says, oh, my, you, do you really want, Jesus came to a point in his life and he, he said, uh, Father, is there some other way? You ever, you ever prayed that? Lord, is there some other way? I can't put up with this, Lord. You want me to do what? I can't do that, Lord. Is there some other way? Can't I just hate somebody a little bit? I mean, after all, they did me wrong. Why have I got to do good to them? Of all the things in the world, God says, okay, if you want to do my will, you've got to love them people. You say, I can't do that. He knows that. That's why he said, you're going to have to turn to him every day. Do we do that or do we figure our day out and then we turn around and say, okay, God, 
Uh, God, and the Holy Spirit will remind you you had not prayed about this. You, you're doing it on your own. If you do it on your own and you say, you go out and something happens and you think, why in the world is this happening to me? And then you think, oh, well, Lord, I hadn't even prayed about this. Uh, uh, would you direct me, Lord? Do I, need to put, do I need to put God first, second, third, or ten? Or number one. Okay, now go to first John. Not John, but first John. Now, you take that woman Mama was singing about, uh, he said, and Jesus was saying, I thirst, give me the drink. And uh, he said, uh, she said, well, the well's deep. I, I ain't got, I got no well. How you gonna get that water out of there? He said, I, if you knew what it was, who I am, if you knew who I was, you would have asked of me and I'd have given you living water. He said, Give me that water you're talking about. He said, okay. Now, what did he tell her to do to get that water? One little, one little thing. Go call your husband. Now, what did you think she was thinking a little bit? Go call my husband. I hadn't got a husband. I said, I know you hadn't. And you had five men, and you're still looking for something that a man is going to satisfy you and everything's going to be all right. But I'm telling you, I can give you living water. You be honest with me. You look at me as a savior. You receive me. You repent of what you're doing. And he said, you'll get eternal life. You repent of that and call me and ask me to be your savior. You ever done that? You ever just call on the Lord? The Bible says if you'll call on him, you'll save him. Is that true or not? See, it boils down to what we believe about this book up here. This Bible tells you what to do and how to walk in the will of God. Now, I hear something I just thought about the Lord reminded me of. Abraham and Sarah will have a promise from God. They knew what God's will was. Abraham was going to have, and Sarah was going to have a child. Well, they done got so old they couldn't have children. You know. They was having problems. Well, they was having problems. And so finally, God was restraining them, so Sarah said, Sarah said, not Abraham, Sarah said, why don't you go in and have sex with the handmaiden and she can have a baby. Now let me tell you something. If you want to know what God's will is not, it's not faith. and you know, what it, you know what a woman tells a man that you can go in and have sex with another woman, there's something wrong right there. It's wrong. Man, all the man. Man. That's wrong. And when she did it, and what did he do? Oh, no, honey, I don't want to do anything like no. that. What did the man do? He did it. He did it. Well, good night. Here we go. Are we still having trouble over that? Mm -hmm. We are still today, the Muslims come from that, 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 uh, that child that was born, the Muslims come after Ishmael. That's who they follow, rather than Isaac. And we're children of Isaac. We believe in Jesus. They believe in Mohammed. And they'll die one day if they never repent and go to hell. And who put this start? Who started this? Well, I hadn't thought about her, but Abraham obeyed. Who does God, by the way, who does God look to? The man or woman? The man. The man. The man's leader, right? Uh, it's like a man, he's the head, but the wife turns his neck. The wife, wife's the neck. <laughs> she does that. Okay. Turns him every which way she wants him to go. You're getting in deep. Deep. <laughs> you better get out of this quick. <laughs> Let's go to something else. Okay. All right, 1 John chapter 5. Now, I want you to pay attention to what it says. Verse 14. And it's amazing to me, the Word of God is wonderful. And this is a confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything, now I'm going to tell you something, that's a big statement. If we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Is that right or not? 1 John 5 and verse 14. And this is a confidence that we have in him 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15. And we know that he hear and if we know that he hear us, hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So what should we ask? Lord, your will be done. Jesus said, not my will, but your will. your will be done. A lot of times you're going to face things and you're going to think, I, uh, I, I think about this. What, what does God want you to do? What job does God want you to have? Uh, I had to make a decision one time. Uh, Roger Barnett, no, no, uh, Bo had offered me a job. And uh, I said, well, Bo, I had talked to... Uh, uh, Scott Jones, and they said that they, they would hire me. And let me see about that first. And the first thing that happened was Duke had come out and said, uh, so it ain't more hurt for you to work on Sunday. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said, uh, yeah. I said, okay, Lord. I went home that night and I wrestled. I said, Lord, now I don't know what to do. I'm starving to death trying to work for Tony Taylor. And he's as moody as any female could ever be in this back and forth. And I'm thinking, this man is something. Something ain't fit, you know. And uh, so I prayed about it, prayed about it. Went to work the next day. And uh, uh, Scott's brother-in-law, if I can call his name, uh, anyway, I forgot it. But he... He come up and he said, uh, listen, we talked to the men. The men said, you can take off since you was a pastor and you can take off on Sundays. I said, okay. God answered their prayer. Well, right. I could have said, well, Lord, that's good money. I didn't even know what I'd be making. But I'm saying God had a will for my life to put me there. And I wondered <laughs> a long time, Lord, what am I doing here? I mean, after all, I'm called to preach and I'm down here and we're working 90 hours a week. We ain't got, I mean, we ain't got no sense. And, and, but God put me where he wanted me. And, and I'm getting to talk to people about Jesus and I go out on locations. And, and I mentioned the other day that Scotty Ford, from way back years ago, that, that he, and he was, uh, I think he was a kind of raised church of Christ. But he said, you know, he calls me on the phone and he, he wouldn't even talk to me. He didn't got so, he didn't got so squirrely and upset with, with the Lord or something happened. And he said, no, I'm, I'm, I, he wouldn't even talk. I kind of called him, talked to him. He didn't want to talk about the Lord, no. But then all of a sudden, now he's serving Jesus. And you say, well, and he thought enough that God had used me enough to talk to him and, and to pray. And before he would do a frack job, he'd have, he'd have us pray. You'd have people come up and pray before they did the job. He'd get killed on one of them things. Right. And, but he was like dedicated, and then all of a sudden he turned back. Now he turned back. And to see that happen, it encourages you, is what I'm saying. It's not that I did anything. I was just obedient to God, and God worked it out and put me in the right place. You see, it was God's will for me to be there. I didn't understand it, and I didn't like it, and I didn't like working day and night, and I didn't like the things that I did a lot of times. But God, let me tell you something. God will take care of you. If he puts you someplace, he'll take care of you. He'll see you all the way through. He'll bless you. He's got a future for you. And I'm going to tell you, it was an amazing thing to watch God do that. And he said, if I ask him, and I know it's his will, he says, you've got the petitions that you need. I'll make sure you do this. I look back on it now for 18 years. I drove a truck and never had an accident as far as a wreck, I'm saying. 18 years and drove like a maniac. The safety man come to me and said, son, I don't want to have to go tell your wife that you got killed in a truck, but if you don't slow down, you are going to get killed as sure as the world. And we don't want that to happen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you off the record, you need to slow down. But that's all we knew was work. Wide open. Who was stolen? He did. Because he's the one put me there. He's got you. 
for it. He wants you. Have you ever, just like a man says, I, I, and I, 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 these young people, okay, they're, they're wondering about who to marry. How are you going to know the will of God about that? You ask him, right? Is that the best way? Ask him. Now, how are you going to know there's no verse in here that says, in the Bible, that says, this is how you can know that, that this is who you ought to marry. Now, you've got patterns and you've got things, but you don't always know. How many of you have made mistakes about getting the wrong person, going to the wrong place, doing the wrong job, and you didn't? I, I worked for Martin Gas one time, and I felt as miserable at that place as I've ever felt. I drove up there every day, loaded a load of jet fuel, brought right through Hainsville, went to Barksdale, unloaded it for the B-52s, come back home, went right through Hainsville now on the second load. I could have stopped there and left the truck there, but oh no, I had to go to Stevens, Arkansas and turn around and drive back home in my little truck and get up the next morning and go up there and do it again. And I thought, this is killing me. And they, they didn't run my the books all day, they just whatever you wanted, they'll send you uh, anywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Lord, this is corrupt all the time. Just you doing stuff is just crazy. Now y'all ain't never done nothing like that. I know that, <laughs> but I mean, that, it can happen, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And what? Okay, now what is God's will? Let me turn to uh, First Peter. Back just a little bit there, First Peter. Now this is this is a controversial. I don't know why it'd be controversial, but some people say it is. I, I ain't got no problem with it. So I'm, I'm sorry, Second Peter, chapter three. I want you to look at Second Peter, chapter three. Uh, and, and look in verse nine. Now we're we're talking about the will of God. And you look in verse uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Let me ask you this. Is God faithful? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%? Yes. He, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So that we be bold to say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man does, you know, to me. Or whatever. I'm going to trust him. Uh, he is faithful not to cause us to be tempted above that we're able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Do we fail? Oh, yeah. Do we, we, we take the bait? Satan throws it out there, you know, and it looks like, man, why are they? that's what I need right there. And you go after it 100 miles an hour, and then you get it, and you think, I really didn't need that. You know, I just felt like that's the wrong thing to do. I should have I should have used a little wisdom with this. And I should have listened to God. And then we make the mistakes, but will God forgive us? He's faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't you love that about God? Amen. Yes. Okay, now, now the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Okay? It's not your you say. People, they come up, I have a promise from God. Wait just a minute. You better be sure it's his promise. As some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us were not, what's that next word? Willing. Willing. Mm -hmm. That any should perish, <coughs> but that all should come to repentance. You say, well, no, God just chose certain people and these certain people going to heaven and the rest of them going to hell. Jesus, that's not what he said to you. He said right here, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, why, why do we not witness? I, I think it's just one basic reason. Well, you know, I don't want to upset nobody. You don't? Okay. Does it, why does it upset people when you talk to them about the Lord? Why do we not want to tell people 
that there is a hell that you can miss and a heaven that you can gain and just sit down and say, listen, let me tell you about the Lord and what he's done for me. And let me tell you what the Bible says. You know, you know, now see, we got preachers today, they come up and they say, well, I know you're a homosexual and I know that you're living in adultery, but God understands. No, God, don't, God says, no, I understand you're living in sin and your sin will find you out. Now, we don't like to tell people that, right? We, we, you say, well, you're not very loving to tell. No. Now, wait a minute. You're not loving if you don't tell somebody the truth right. of God's Word. Right. And the reason we don't like to tell it is because it kind of gets on us, and, and you point the finger at me like, I don't like you because you talk about the truth of the Bible, I just don't see the Bible that way. It's kind of like that country and western song says, and I, and I hope there ain't no hell. Okay, you might hope there ain't no hell, but there is a hell. And who told it? Who told, who told us about hell? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Why did he not want us to go? He's not willing that any should, and that word is perish. What does that mean? For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, perish but have everlasting, everlasting, life. everlasting life. You can have everlasting life. Right. Who? You. Anybody. That's right. Anybody. He says, come. Drink of the water of life freely. He said, well, freely? It's free? It's free. Well, somebody had to pay but it's free to you. It's free to your family. We say, well, I don't want to, I just want to believe that everybody's going to be okay, and I know that they're not living for God, but I don't want to upset the apple cart, so let's don't say anything, because if you say anything, you're going to upset them. You wait until they wake up in hell, you talk about upset, they're going to be upset. You never mentioned him to me. You knew I was a straight. You knew I didn't know. You knew that, that I was blinded, but you never said anything. I, I had a guy tell me one time, I wish they'd leave God in the church where he's alone. That's it. That's what they want. Leave me alone. I witnessed to a guy. Yeah. And another guy at work, uh, well, I'm a good person. Yes. Uh, they don't want to hear no more. That's right. And that And that's the way they want it? You've done what God called you to do. That's the whole thing. Now, now answer this. What if you don't do it? Is that a sin? No, I'm going think about it now. Yeah. If you don't want, if the Holy Spirit says you need to talk to that person. You might have been the one that had the very word that he needed. Exactly. So why don't we do it? Because it's embarrassing. It, it, I, I, uh, what you're more ashamed of Jesus than you are warning somebody and you say well I don't know this person maybe you don't know the person but God's called us to carry the gospel and the Bible says how can they hear without a preacher well somebody to tell them how they're going to hear the blood's going to be on your hands what Ezekiel says and I, I, I think about this I, I can remember I remember times that God has told me talk to somebody and I didn't do it and they died I, I, I mean I, I remember the people I'm talking about and I said Lord I'm sorry and I pray you'll forgive me and, and I pray uh, Jean uh, what was Jean's last name Reeves Reeves uh, no no Jean clean the house Jean oh, Bailey Bailey she got to tell me one day the people she talked to and witnessed to when she cleaned houses and she'd be around people. And she, I thought, you know, you just don't know how encouraging that is to me because I wanted to talk to her about the Lord and she had already talked to her. Mm -hmm. uh, two, there's two people that come to mind real quick. Frank Lewis, Frank's mother was raised in the church. Well, you didn't talk to Frank. 
He didn't know he didn't know God had a name if it wasn't blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. He just didn't care. He didn't care about you, he didn't care about nobody. Well, God laid it on my heart to even go see him. Well, I don't I don't even know if he's alive. Is he dead? No, I was gonna ask you, but I, I don't know. I'm just not sure. And I thought but his his mother, I'm sure she prayed for him. But if God laid it on your heart, why did he do that? Like, like you talk about, it, uh, David, if you might have been the person. And I and I drove the Frank before, you know. But you didn't, you didn't want to talk about the Lord. I'll tell you something else. Jerry Clements, uh, is it one, one of them, one of the Clements that mowed the yards. Jerry. They said he got right with the Lord before he died. But you didn't talk to him about the Lord. Joe Ivey was the same way. He was just a cuss and blaspheme, and he, you know, I just, that's him, you know. God still calls us to warn them, people. I wonder if we'd be willing to do that, see. Uh, do we want that on us? You say, well, that puts me under what? It puts you under a responsibility that Jesus Christ has left you here, and, and here's the thing God will do. He will today put somebody on your heart. You say, you need to talk to him. You say, Lord, now don't, here's what we do. We get all prepared. We don't have to prepare. Ask the Lord to help you. He'll lead you. He'll, he'll lead you. put you where you need and, and he'll open the door. Now, is it our responsibility to go through the door? Mm -hmm. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And if we don't go through the door, how many times I've been in stores and God laid on my heart to talk to somebody and I wouldn't do it and there wouldn't be nobody in the store. I said, well, Lord, I go back in. Okay, Lord, I go back in. I go back in and there's a hundred people in there. Boy, you blew that deal, didn't you? God done moved everybody out so you could talk to somebody. And uh, you say, well, what am I going to tell them? Just tell them what God's done for you. And tell them that, that God loves them and he wants to send them to a great place one day. And that's what we're here for. And, and say, well, what if it cost me? That's what Jesus said. Take up your cross daily and follow me. And you know what? That's what we're called to do is to witness. How can they hear without a preacher? I, I, if, they're, if they're not saved, if they're lost, and they live trying to live without God, you say, but well, I... I I, I just, I don't know. It's just hard for me. Sure, it's hard for us. Jesus, Jesus went ahead and he talked to people knowing all the time they was going to crucify him. But he told them the truth, didn't he? There's two people that were stoned to death in, in the New Testament. Stephen was stoned. Yep. And the Apostle Paul. They actually left him for dead. See? Okay, when Stephen was stoned, you know who was at his stoning? Saul was, which Saul. was Paul later. He watched it, and he consented unto his death, and he was holding the, the cloak while they killed him. And you know, you don't know how God used that. You say, Lord, you want me to die for you? I think for it's over with you. One of the reasons, and you can watch this, it won't be long, preachers are going to jail. Yeah. They're going to go to jail. And, and I'm going to say, my wife, she said it too, you know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's what that guy said. He said, he robbing a bank, and he said, that guy was standing there and said, that, this one guy, he looked at him and he said, did you see me rob that bank? He said, yeah, he just shot him, boom. He said, this next guy, he said, did you see me rob that bank? He said, no, but my wife did. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I heard a good one the other day. They were... <laughs> <laughs> God said, he said, whatever you do, don't ask your wife what's for supper while she's out mowing the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that hurt, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, see, God has a plan. He has a will, doesn't he? And you know, what we need to do is just say, Lord, I don't know how to get there, and I don't know what to do, and I don't want to do. Abraham made a mess. And, oh, my goodness. You've got to study the scriptures. 
you see where Abraham such he had such a hard time of dealing with that boy and dealing with everything and but see God God knows we're going to suffer on this earth. He's called us to suffer. That's what Peter said. And so he said he's not willing that any should perish, but we're to carry the gospel and warn people and tell them, listen, I don't want that blood on me. So we don't need to worry about getting embarrassed. There's a right time and a wrong time. I have gone to places, and uh, I never forget in Ringo one day, and I said something to somebody about the Lord, and that person eat my, mm -hmm. eat me out. Uh oh, I'm out of my territory here. I just let people that's here sometimes. Sometimes that's where we need wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. When to say, what to do. The Holy Spirit will lead you and tell you what to do if we'll listen. How many of you know that you generally, if you, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit? You don't want to do it. <laughs> You just think, Lord, I got an excuse, and Lord, you know how it is. I don't know them people, and I mean, after all, Lord, they don't listen to me anyway. And and Lord, I, I you know, and all God just said, listen, that's the reason I'm laying it on your heart. You need to say something. So after you said it, Dad used to say, I'll tell you one thing. I ain't going back over there. They, if they want to go to hell, they'll just have to go to hell. I'm not going back over there. They done lied to me. They done done this and that. And the Lord laid on his heart. He just go right back over there. I mean, that's, that's just life. And God knows he is not willing that any should perish, but they're all come to repentance. And it is hard. Isn't it hard? It is. I mean, especially family. Especially yes. those close to you. And, uh, but you never know what an influence you're having on people. So don't stop. That's the main thing. And uh, we need one another. But thank God uh, for his grace, for his mercy, and for him seeing us all the way through. Amen. Amen. And, uh, well, I appreciate you being here. And I, I pray, listen, pray for us. We, uh, all, do we all need help? Yeah. 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 All of us. At a point. Uh, I still ask you, what's it going to be like when you leave this earth and go to the Just like. That quick. I thought about if he's laying down at night and the Lord took you home, you're going to wake up in glory. And think, oh Lord. But it, it, can that happen? Does that have to happen sometimes? People leave us. They leave in the earth right now. Right. They're going home. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. This is an excitement, but yeah. I mean, you think, praise God. If you're not ready, though, it's no excitement. So you pray that people you're around, people that God puts you around, places God's going to put you this week, that you can be a witness and you, you can see what God is doing. It's kind of like a. a talking to a doctor over one day, a heart doctor, and he said, I said, doctor, are you a Christian? He said, yeah, I don't act like I'm talking to you know. <laughs> it was real funny in a sense. But that, see, you, you gotta be willing to make a, made a, look like a fool. That, that's, that's what the Bible says. Paul says, I'm a fool for Christ. Who's a fool with you? You know, that's what, you know, you can be a fool of the devil. You can not say anything. And God's called us to be a witness for him. For him. It's for him. It's not about us. It, you know, if it's left up to us, we just say, oh, y'all get it the best way y'all got it. How'd you get it? By the way, how'd you get saved? Grace. What because we were good. Yeah. Once you accept Christ, he could take you on home right then. Right then. But he leaves you here to take care of his work. Amen. And witness for him. He's not through with you. And don't let the devil beat you up about, well, you didn't do that right. I, I think, Lord, I, what am I going to do about these sins that I've committed? I mean, I'm, that, well, that's why Jesus shed his blood on the cross was to cleanse us from unrighteousness. And, uh, aren't you glad his, it took his blood? If, if, if they accept the blood of bulls and goats and all this other stuff in the Old Testament as, as, a, as a 
not just a payment, but moving it up until the day that Jesus would come. How much more would God forgive you because of the death and the blood of his son? And, uh, would you call on him today? Let's just pray together. If you want to call on the Lord, very simple. If the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you be willing to let him have your life today? You say, well, I'm, I'm rejecting him. He ought to reject me. Well, he should have, but he didn't. And he's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Would you be willing today to repent of your sin and receive him as your Lord? Ask him. Take time today to ask him. You don't know what your future is. You don't know that you might face God today. And if you don't know it, it's not going to be good. And the thing is, it's going to be for eternity. It's not just a few thousand years. It's for eternity. You will live in the lake of fire, away from your family, away from God. But you can, listen, God gave us the remedy for that. Would you ask him today, take time today, and just say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, I believe your word, and I, I want to repent of my sin, not somebody else's, but my sin, and I want you to come into my life today and let me know that I'm your child. Now you pray that and ask, ask the Lord, sincere from the heart, and God will hear that prayer, and he will come into your life, and he will change you. And you'll be just like Jesus one day. We'll get to stand with him. And what a day that's going to be when my Jesus I get to see. Do it today before it's too late. Father, bless you children today. Thank you for them. I pray your encouragement in our lives. And we see we don't see a bright future in this earth, but we see it in you. And I, I thank you for each person that's here. Thank you for their love for you. <laughs> And their love for the calling and their calling in your life. Help us, Lord Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate it. <coughs> He's for us. Yes, he is. Not against us. Yep. Stand with sister uh, Jimmy. Pray for her.